Andy, what can you tell us what's really going on here? Yeah, what Epler said, and, and just to give a little more detail to that. So the Mets today, as he said, we're talking to doctors, and they've got what I understand to be like three different approaches about that they can take, and they're weighing them. They're talking to the player, talking to the player's agent, trying to figure out which course of action to take. That three-month shutdown uh, that's been out there, I, I think it's kind of the worst-case scenario. We know with a stress fracture in the rib, he's going to miss time. Right. And he's probably going to miss significant time. As far as whether it'll be till the All-Star break, we should know by Tuesday, Wednesday, or so what what course uh, Quintana and the Mets decide to go. So they're just looking at a couple options. None is great, uh, but it may not be worst case yet. We'll see. And, and sitting on this couch, I've talked about Quintana a lot yeah. and how valuable he is, his yeah. rotation especially, because I've always said that lefty arm has just balanced it. Like, if I were looking at the rotation, I would have even slotted him third to split up the righties. And he was always just a guy who gives you really effective innings, and a lot mm -hmm. of them in a season. In his 11 seasons, nine of them, he has pitched over 100 innings. Of those nine, four have been over 200 innings so you can see the gap now that the Mets are going to try to fill now you think to slot Peterson in there because of the lefty situation mm -hmm. but I even think maybe right now especially because in the Mets farm system they only have one pitcher who's pitched above high A so you can't go down there or into the farm system to get anyone and so if you go out now and look at someone maybe you look at like a Dallas Keuchel I know he hasn't been as strong as of late but it's really a low risk kind of signing and it's could be that you need more depth the longer Quintana is out. You know, it's interesting. I, I hadn't thought about the Keuchel name, but I remember running that one by Epler last year yeah. when they had a, 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 a like vacancy for whatever reason in their in their rotation, and he does not seem to like going outside for those like okay. veteran guys. That just seems to be his approach. It's like, and you're right, they have no depth. Behind the guys that we know, starting pitching depth in the system is just non-existent, and they, they're well aware of that. But for some reason, when you get these guys sort of in the back ends of their, of their careers, like a Keuchel, uh, I've noticed that Epler's been not that interested in that kind of category. But if they have another, uh, right now they're okay. But they're a couple injuries away from maybe needing to get creative. Uh, you hope those injuries don't happen. Let's make the call to the bullpen and welcome in Terry Collins. Terry, you dealt with this firsthand in 2016 with Lugo and Gazelman filling in. How much confidence would you have in David Peterson and Tyler McGill as potential replacements in that rotation? Well, I, I think you're. I think they're going to be fine. I, I thought what I saw from Peterson last year, he had some good outings. Tyler McGill, I mean, when he first got up in the rotation, he pitched very, very good and, until he got hurt. So, you know what, you're, you, you know, when you're talking about that fifth guy, hey, you're looking for innings right now. You're looking for, you know, to, you know, to get some innings for your bullpen and, and uh, so you can protect you, you can protect protect your aces a little bit so I think they're okay right now I, I think they they are going to probably search out somebody that to, to certainly maybe send a triple a and, and have have a little bit of insurance that, that if something happens to somebody else they have someone else ready 